A lot of good years working with Les. A lot of good years. I think I joined the leagues of followers and fans that started with uh, Les's first appearance on a record. My mother was the one that turned me on to Les, and so we went backstage afterwards. And after a bit of a few laughs, Les turned around and proposed to my mother, which I thought was, damn it, why hadn't he done that earlier? You know, I could have got a few tips, you know. Not only was Les a guitar player, he was a showman. And that's the combination you need to be top in your field. You know, I'm familiar with Les Paul's guitar playing, of course, but I just sort of went up there thinking I'll just wing it. And uh, he basically wiped the stage up with me. <laughs> so I always put it. took all of the elements to make a record. Production, engineering, technology, you know, being a gearhead and musician. And he put it all together and made 38 million selling songs. Gibson laughed at him for 10 years. Says that guy with the broomstick with the pickups on it. Gotta go, man, this is a joke. So after 10 years, they finally got back with him and it's now history. I mean, it's the number one guitar in the world. And you go into the house there and I remember just plugging, like I said, plugging into that board. That was the original console and it was still working. And that's in the kitchen. he was always wanting you to do your best, you know. But there was definitely humor, a lot of it actually, <laughs> on stage and off. <laughs> 92, going on 93, I mean, what can I say? Well, you say that, but I feel like a condemned building with a new flagpole on it. <laughs> The song we did today is a song that uh, I would do at the Iridium with them. But they seem to like Besame Mucho, and that's why we did that uh, today. that Somewhere Over the Rainbow happened to be Les Paul's favorite song. If happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, why, oh, why can't I? His name, as far as what he did for music, will be remembered for the next 500 years. So he's just as important as Mozart or Einstein. And he was a wizard, really. And when you talk about people like uh, Edison, you know, uh, he was up there with him, at least. 
at least. What we're going to try to do today is recreate uh, a 100-year-old recording technique. This is going to be part one of this cylinder. <laughs> and if you just wait a few seconds, he's going to turn this thing over to the next one. And we'll have a part two. <laughs> got asked to do this uh, tribute with Lou on Lou's record. Um, he asked me to play the song uh, that was the very last song that Wes played live, which was Sweet Georgia Brown. So that's, that was like, you know, extra heavy duty. <laughs> Let's take this out and see if we can get a job playing on Monday nights because that was my night off. A dream of mine to, to record that song because I love it. Smile, though your heart is aching. Smile. You know, so he was a total catalyst. Uh, all of us guitar players, you know, hats off, you know. <laughs> 